Okay, so hello everybody. It's the 19th of April 2018 and I'm going to do a screen capture today just as a video. It's Thursday. I'm going to try and do a video every week to see what I'm doing and how I've been doing with Marginalia. Um, and I'm going to start a little bit out of order today. Uh, I'm sorry, you can't see my mouse. I haven't set that up yet, but here on the top left of the screen under the way, underneath where it says uh, home, I'm saying that yes, I'm ready to do a video on where I am with Marginalia. I will mention PeerTube and this video, uh, which everybody should watch. All right, somebody's favoriting my status up there. We'll talk about that in a little while. But first, let's go over to um, PeerTube. Uh, and this is one instance of PeerTube, and this is one um, video on it. And I'm going to use this as an example because it is... Um, it's called the internet, uh, the internet's own, own boy. I'm not sure how the sound will be with this. Actually, thinking about it, but let's try it nonetheless. I'm going to play a little bit from this, and this is a Creative Commons video called uh, "The Internet's Own Boy" about Aaron Schwartz, um, whose life and work really influenced me very much. I wouldn't be here, and Martin Ali perhaps wouldn't exist without him. Let's just show a bit from that. All right, so I think everybody should go and watch that video, whether here or, or elsewhere. It really affected me. I watched it at um, a documentary film festival a few years back. This is kind of a decentralized version of YouTube, essentially, this PeerTube. There is not one instance. There are several, and you can have as many as you want. You can self-host this video hosting website, and how it works is... In your browser, it has a torrent client which downloads the video. You don't need to worry about it. You simply need to navigate to the right address and you will be able to see the video. Um, okay, somebody's mentioning me up here, so we'll talk about that. That is Jeff from Fourth Estate. Um, and we will go back to that in a minute. But I wanted to start off out of order with this video simply because it's probably taken up quite a lot of resources so I'm going to close it down so that the video doesn't skip too much and let's now work our way back again I talked about peer tube and actually uh, what I'm trying to do with that is to discuss alternatives to the monolithic solutions like YouTube like Google uh, in any sense really and uh, like any of Google services, like Facebook and like any of Facebook's services, there are alternatives, and those alternatives are often community-style alternatives. Um, in an essay I'm writing on Marginalia right now, I'm looking at how these kind of distributed, kind of global communities compare to the kind of communities that would have been known by people like Bohomil Harabao, um, years and years ago by people like my parents who came from the west of Ireland and the like. What is the difference? And there are some real differences and it's going to take a little bit of a, well, it's going to take a lot of time to pick those apart really when I'm writing and working on that essay. Um, but this is the fourth estate social. So we saw a minute ago kind of this Jeff who, who wrote about me, I don't know what he wrote, let's see. Uh, protonvpn.com he's telling me yeah we'll talk about that as well but that's a good one I'll, I'll, I'll kind of um, I'll favorite that for the moment so if we look here he's interacting with me this is a um, a kind of Twitter clone a decentralized Twitter clone which is set up in this instance by this fellow he's called Jeff and he's the founder of fourthestate.org and um, I don't know if he set it up himself or, or what it is, but there's somebody who is certainly running the server for him, if it's not him himself. And then he has opened up his own server to journalists and people interested in journalism um, and supportive of his aims at, at Fourth Estate. Take a look at, at that as well, about his own, uh, 
his own work at fourthestate.org. You can do that. Um, but I joined this the other day after seeing an invite code on Twitter because I've been looking at getting away from Twitter and the proprietorial, centralized, um, one size fits all um, social media solutions. So I signed up to this as Crosruck. I guess, was I? No, I'm Marginalia, sorry, there's two versions here. This is Marginalia at uh, Fourth Estate. Um, and so, that is one instance of something called Mastodon, which is one alternative to Twitter, essentially. It's based on Twitter and how Twitter looks. And then there are many others, and it's called a federated social network. So each of these community instances can interact with each other in various ways and you can follow people across the different communities but I'd also like to draw attention to this which is what I'm writing about oh dear I, I started getting into Windrush basically all of the uh, people who came over from I guess the what would you call it the Commonwealth countries essentially to British um, they're getting into trouble now because it seems that kind of Theresa May in particular, actually, because it goes back to the time when she was a uh, foreign secretary, Theresa May's government just do not agree that these people should be considered unproblematically British. I said here I would love to do a video on their experiences and catch up with a few of the people from each first generation, Irish and Jamaican, in Dudley in the industrial West Midlands in the 1960s. I'm talking about essentially, I guess if I scroll up I'll make that more clear, I apologise. Um, as for Windrush, if anybody is surprised that the Thatcherite clique that took over the Tories, or the Tory party, are white supremacists to the core, they might think about looking over the history of the UK. But it makes me seriously debate whether I ought to renounce my British citizenship if this is what Britain is to become. My parents went over from Ireland and had Jamaican family as neighbours, had at Jamaican family as neighbours. And I'm talking about a Guardian article there, but there's been a lot about this, and... I am disgusted by it, frankly. Um, now, I talk there about renouncing my British citizenship. It's not something that I want to do. I'll click over here to, to the other one here. I'm talking to David Lammy. So, David Lammy has made an impassioned speech in uh, Parliament, possibly yesterday, possibly the day before. I saw it a couple of days ago, um, uh, maybe. And what to say? He, he's disgusted. Um, I saw similar videos of him and from him, for example, at the time of the um, awful fire at, at Grenfell, I guess, pff, is that now six months ago, it's a little more than six months ago perhaps now. And he's the kind of member of parliament that I want to see, actually. And uh, so I'm writing to him here, and he's got a thread about this morning I've written to the Prime Minister setting out Ted urgent questions the government must answer about the Windrush crisis. We can see that I've not confirmed my email change to crosserick at marginalia.eu where you can write to me should you wish. Uh, I'll check that any time now. But um, again, I'm talking about this thing that, you know, my parents came over from the west of Ireland in the 1960s and then neighbours in Dudley in the West Midlands uh, came over from Jamaica. My parents worked in big factories and stuff over there and several generations then grew up next to one another until I was growing up the next town along in Stourbridge um, and I didn't kind of see them so much for that reason um, now I was kind of serious about kind of well two things I was serious about certainly considering renouncing my, my citizenship so I mention it here you know I've got an Irish passport now um, I consider myself a European um, I was born when uh, Britain was a member of the European Union and I think they're making a terrible mistake and I think they've lied to us consistently about why they want to go down that route. I don't think a single person who is in power right now in, in, in Britain has been honest for the last two, three, four, five years and I think that there's been major problems in uh, the British political elites since at least the 1980s. But nevertheless, I have been thinking about taking that step, which is extreme. Somebody writes to me, I wouldn't go that far. Well, I don't think I will, I say, you know. 
But my being in a position where I consider such a step says something about how the British political establishment has failed since the Thatcher years, and I'd like to break down a taboo in discussing it. I'm angry at Theresa May, but she's a mere symptom, which she is and she isn't. She's an active part of the problem as well, actually. But um, we're talking about a complete systemic failure, which has lasted generations, blah, 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 blah. Now, um... I have, over the last uh, few months and things like that, been looking into, um, well, payment methods, things like that. People can support me, which we will see, I guess, at the end of the video will be the time to do that. But let me show you something, because I had, at the time that my uncle died, I think it was now, wow, it'll be getting on for a year. So I went back home a year ago. And my uncle, who I am absolutely certain had Asperger's Syndrome the same as I have myself, uh, he was a self-employed driving instructor, and he lived in Dudley. Um, and he was certainly part of the community, despite the uh, disadvantage of being uh, Asperger. It's a disadvantage, certainly, in terms of, of in terms of community, it's, it's, it's generally thought. Um, and I think he did okay, and I think he had a nice life over there. Uh, but I went back for his funeral, and there I saw some of the neighbor's family. Um, so George, I'll give the name of the kind of, let's call it the head of the family in this instance, because um, he was often spoken of in that sense, really, and of that generation that was kind of um, almost accepted that that would be the case. Now, I met a few of his... Uh, of his family, and I've met them a couple of times before, pretty rarely, uh, because my grandparents have been dead for a while. I've been living over here in Britain, in, in Prague, sorry, in the Czech Republic. Um, but around the time I was going back, I was thinking of trying to get out of teaching, which I was doing at the time, and I was really trying to think about how nice it would be to record the experiences of these two generations from Ireland in this instance and from Jamaica um, and the backgrounds of these families who grew up next to each other and then taking in a little of the uh, fortunes I guess of Dudley and, and, and the, um, the black country and just organically building up um, some material um, by doing that. I think that that's something that I could do. I don't have the funding to do it but were anybody to fund me, I think I would be able to put something like that together. But in any case, I just think that something like this needs to be done. Now, here we've got something called Jitsi. And the nice thing about Jitsi, it's kind of like an alternative to Skype. So I want to give a lot of these alternatives right now. And I, I haven't looked into this very much. Nevertheless, we've got examples down here uh, in, in the box at the bottom next to Go. Um, you can't see my mouse pointer again, I'm sorry about that. But you've got examples of why you can just write in a team name. So, Theresa May, uh, let's say, Windrush Fiasco. Windrush is the boat uh, that took a lot of people in, I guess, from the, uh, the West Indies, from, from Jamaica and uh, the Caribbean. I'm not sure, per se well, let's find out. I'm sorry. But that's... I don't want to get that wrong. Uh, Windrush, blah, 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 HMT. HMT Empire Windrush. I mean, look at the name. All right, so originally MV Monterosa was a passenger liner and cruise ship launched in Germany in 1930. During the 1930s, she operated as a German cruise ship under the name Monterosa. During World War II, she was operated by the German Navy as a troop ship. She was acquired by the United Kingdom government as a prize of war at the end of the war and renamed Empire Windrush. In British service, she continued to be used mainly as a troop ship until 1954. All right, so now it's best remembered today for bringing one of the first large groups of post-war West Indian immigrants to the United Kingdom, carrying 492 passengers and a number of stowaways on a voyage from Jamaica to London in 1948. British Caribbean people who came to the United Kingdom in the period after World War II are sometimes referred to as the Windrush generation. What is the name thinking about it now? I'm trying to think of what the uh, the name was of 
the generation who went to uh, America from Ireland, for example. In many ways, it's a similar, similar kind of trip, um, but it's not viewed in the same way, and I wonder why that is. There must be a, a kind of reason hiding away there somewhere, and I can't quite put my finger on it, but nevertheless, Empire Windrush, there we are. So we've got a name here <coughs> for our room. Now, if I were doing this live, then anybody could type in this. All right. This is just saying to, to, to let them use my camera. I'm going to let them use my camera. You're going to see my ugly face for a little while. So, bang. What we do now, you can see me. And if you went on this... Um, you can't see my finger. Where is it? I'm going to get my finger in there. If you look at the bar up here, I think you'll be able to see it. All right, then if you write this in, or if you were to write that in, when I'm actually working on this, where I'm, when I'm talking, then you'd appear somehow, and we could have a conversation. And it's also possible somehow, I think I found it earlier on, uh, you got share a YouTube video, go live now. So we could go live now, and I could kind of then enter your YouTube stream key here. We could then live stream it here. The nice thing about that actually is that by doing that, you can simply open up a room. You can go live stream your video. Um, I would like to use something else. It would be great to use something like PeerTube or something as an alternative. I've been uploading my videos to archive.org. Um, but in any case, when you've got a video, if you've got something like a Creative Commons license, um, there's different kinds of Creative Commons licenses. I've discussed that at marginalia.eu. But if you were to have them, then people can take those videos and edit them themselves. So even if I were to do like an interview here, talking to somebody, let's say it's the neighbours across the road uh, from my parents when they were growing up in Dudley. Let's say I got a contact. Let's say I kind of gave them the, rude num the, the room number, sorry. And we met up like this in, where is it again? Where is my finger? Can I get it up there? Uh, how does this work? That way. All right. Um, if you can look at jitsi.org instead of Skype and use that as a more open, more secure way of doing it, um, or even if you want to do Skype, I don't know, it's up to you. Um, and then just record those videos and then piece them together somehow. So you could create an effective form of citizen journalism essentially um, by doing that. Journalism in its most basic form is talking to people, is getting their, their story across. There's different ways to do that. And that's what marginalia.eu is all about. I would be very interested in making a video like that. But ultimately, I just think that it's important that a video like that exists. All right? And um, whether it's me, whether it's somebody else, whether I'm the right person to do that, whether I'm not, that's everybody's decision to make. But um, I think that the story hasn't been told right now. Just, what just regularly everybody uh, is is having a go at Jeremy Corbyn I'm not talking about the anti-semitism thing there because I think that's probably a valid point um, whether people are using it against him for political reasons or not I don't know but if there is any anti-semitism in the labor movement then it needs to be uh, broken down as a taboo talked about and and really addressed um, and there's a lot of problems in the Labour, the same as there are a lot of problems in, in, in the Tor Tory party. And this is not a political, um, it's not a party political issue. It's just about making that debate more resilient, more robust, more constructive, um, and having fewer, fewer unnecessary taboos and fewer... Um, shibboleths, fewer, fewer things that everybody has to agree with in order for you to be listened to um, is kind of important. So in any case, I wanted to talk about that not as a major project that I want to do, because I've got plenty of stuff to be doing right now, but I want that to be addressed. And I think that's one of the things that's being um, left behind in a lot of the journalism that we see in, in Britain right now. And also... Um, I want to talk openly about how, you know, I'm personally, um, as I guess I was first generation British, and I just think that's a really shitty thing to be. I just don't want to be that right now. If if this is what Britain is, if, if what Theresa May represents is what Britain is, then where's my passport, you know? 
I've got a passport somewhere, it's an Irish passport, and maybe I'll stick with that, you know? Um, really, um, I'm kind of really just, just incredulous how incompetent, how offensive, how blatant um, these people are. Lie and rely, that's what they're doing the whole time, and uh, it kind of, I've had enough of that. Um, in any case, so let's get rid of this. Maybe we'll do that in future. Maybe we'll use this live stream and stuff, and I'll sometimes maybe have just meetings to say what's going on, maybe talk to people who have been uh, in some way, I don't know, contributing to the project or whatever else. But let's get on to what the project itself looks like via quickly, my God, email. You know, please move away from Gmail. This is one of the alternatives. Um, I've been looking into the alternatives and I have been using ProtonMail.com. I've got a few issues with them right now and... Um, I looked at using Proton VPN previously. I kind of set it up on Cubes OS. Um, and I looked at setting up elsewhere, but it was essentially. I'm going to get rid of that. You don't want to look at my face anymore. It's slowing down the computer. All right. So um, it was leaking. Uh, what's it called? DNS, uh, which is kind of. The internet is joined up in many different ways, and DNS is when you look up the address of something, and then you go there. And with a VPN, which is a virtual private network, so that you look like you're based and you're asking for documents from the internet from somewhere else. Um, and it wasn't working. It wasn't working because, first of all, I was making the look up, so I was looking at the address book from this address and then I could be geolocated there and then I was going for finding the answer where the address is and going for it um, uh, on from somewhere else on the internet where it looked that way uh, in any case I couldn't get it set up and I have a few issues with that but it doesn't matter right what have we got now we're gonna look at uh, okay so I'll start again recording again on VLC you've got it all in check but if you go down here it's basically open capture device control C and that's how to get it started there's a couple more fiddly things going on after that but there it is um, if I close down the Mastodon instance there all right and I will leave that page uh, I don't need that either so going back to the index I can go to the wiki the wiki is a good place to look actually there's a lot of information there if you click on random pages you'll find about books called democracy in Europe which I was hoping still am hoping in fact to write for um, to write a review on in issue zero uh, the owned mind you could pronounce that Opushtines Bolechnos that's a book by um, the editor-in-chief of respect here in the Czech Republic uh, which is pretty good actually and then this is about a video alright um, Libri Pohibiti it's a library of Samizdat work here in Prague and it is wonderful I'm gonna look for issue zero and um, issue zero is what I'm preparing at the moment and you can find out details about that here um, and for example, that review just I just mentioned, a review of Democracy in Europe by Larry Sedentop, which kind of goes back to um, 2001, when we still had a very different debate about the European Union and what it could be. Anyway, going back to that initial page, so I'll click right button and go back to index main. All right, so... I talk about how I host my videos either at the Internet Archive. The Internet Archive, by the way, is a great resource. I've got here, I have downloaded a bunch of videos that you see here, some audio that you see there. You can torrent it, you can download it, and normally you can play it in your browser as well. I can look at web archives, and I have the first web archive also of uh, madaganalia.eu. I've got there so I think that that is really a very good um, resource to use especially if you're 
into publishing as well. You can track all the different changes in your um, website. I then go on to say there is an additional work in progress in the shape of a diaspora pod. That is, an instance of a community-hosted social media network currently titled Plural Polis Prague. This can be found at ppp.marginalia.eu. Should you find it working, you may sign up. Since it is free and since you are not in this instance paying with your soul or your community, it would be wise not to expect, expect the flawless service you may get elsewhere. All right, Diaspora. Okay, I originally thought about um, trying to set up an instance of, or a pod of Diaspora. Diaspora is a social network. It was begun by a number of friends following a talk by Columbia University Law Professor Eben Moglen in 2010. He was later to do a couple of videos or a couple of talks about Edward Snowden, incidentally. Diaspora aims to decentralize social networking and gives users choice and control over their own data. The software is stable, but people have not to date migrated en masse from Facebook or and other proprietorial platforms. It looked difficult to install, actually, so I went for something else. Uh, I have mentioned by now Mastodon, and um, and Mastodon I didn't go for either. In, in in fact, in the end, I went for something called Ple uh, Pleroma, and um, I'll show you something here. How do you work out how to do something like that when you're lost and you're trying to work out how to set up uh, servers and reverse proxies and nginx and Postgres. SQL and I don't know how to pronounce any of it because it's something that I've learned on my own essentially all of this and Linux and I don't know what else uh, and sometimes what you do is you come somewhere like this and you feel like a bit of an idiot because here is all of the people who are actually writing this software they're writing building Pleroma so you know all of the software is made by people um, and these guys were building a lot of it while I was trying to install it and they also helped me to try to install it because I came here. It's called IRC. Alright, it's you often hear Freenode and then this is Pleroma, a, a chat room on Freenode. And it's kind of cool once you get used to it and uh, I'm kind of getting used to it now. Close that. Alright, so so I set this up, and what does it mean? It means that I can write my own statuses, and I'm hosting my own data. Um, so it means that I only have my own incompetency and uh, and lack of talent and time and resources to, 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 to blame for myself. I could lose any of this, let's be honest, okay? Uh, because I'm not, you know, I'm not Facebook. <laughs> but And if you ever join this, this network, you might be taking a risk that the data might be lost, Let's let's face it. But nevertheless, I'm then in control of my data, and um, I feel kind of good about doing that. And I feel that it's right as somebody who's self-publishing and trying to trying to create something to actually have something like this. And I would like to see instances of it from, yeah, why not the Guardian, whatever else. Just uh, let's say it's a skateboard. I don't know what. Just um, a skating rink. Just a skating whatever. <laughs> what do you call them? A skate ramp. Uh, they could have their own instance of something and uh, you could try to let's go to um, what was I looking at recently liberapay.com and let's just for the sake of argument see whether I could if I were well if I had any money um, if I were able to I don't know if there is a Libra pay for these people, for these guys uh, who are developing Pleroma. But there you are. So in any case, I set up something like my own version of um, Twitter. And you can see it here. In future, I might try to set up something like uh, Peertube. We'll see if that works. Um, but that's kind of... Well, that's some of the kind of stuff I've been working on. Otherwise... You can see a lot of the, um, I don't want about. You can see a lot of the stuff I've been actually writing kind of here. Uh, 
So the actual writing I'm doing you can find here. Um, I've not updated it for a little while, so I've got some from two weeks ago, Naharazi Pritomnosti, and um, another update will be coming soon. I've really done a lot with the back end and how it gets put together, so it might look a little bit differently. Um, and really, I guess that is it, except to say, please, um, if you like any of what I'm doing, then please you can come here and you can help to fund me. Um, you've got Bitcoin donations here, there's a couple more up here on the top, Patreon, PayPal, Brave, yeah, whatever you think about that. And um, I also said you can buy me albums at Bandcamp, <laughs> which I kind of added recently when I was writing something about Bandcamp. Um, and it will be also, I just showed you Libra Pay, so you can also find me at Libra Pay Crossrock. Um, that'll be coming up soon with an update to the website in general because I'm basically rebuilding all of it. Um, I'm sorry that was a lot longer than I hoped for today, but I hope that you might have got something from it. I'll come back with a an actual video maybe sometime next week or sometime soon. But in the meantime, thanks for watching.